Okay, so here we are. We've got three planes here we're going to look at. And here's another example. To do so, I'm going to set up the scenario. I've got my coefficients into a matrix. One, one, oh. one, one, negative one and two, and three minus three, three and eight. Here is my matrix. I'm going to start with the first equation. I'm just going to write it down. The next equation I'm going to do some calculations on. I'm going to do it scratch work over here so I don't mess up. I want this to be negative 2. So negative 2, negative 2, positive 2, and negative 4. And make sure I do not multiply everything by negative 2. Be careful with your operations. Add them up, I get 0, negative 3, 3, and 1. So 0, negative 3, 3, and 1. Here's the second line. Now I want to make the third line down here. Well, one of the easy things, I can also use this, these two rows, add them together, which would be, I'm going to multiply this by negative 3, negative 3, 3, and negative 6, 3, negative 3, 3, and 8. I go along and I add them up, I get 0, negative 6, 6, and 2, which is, divide everything by 2, I get 0, negative 3, negative 3, and 1. And so now I can see that this is 2, negative 1, 1, 5, 0, negative 3, 3, and 1. If I just add them straight away or subtract them straight away, I get 0, 0, 0, 0. So if I have this scenario here with all these zeros, what is that going to look like? Let's take a look and see. Here is this scenario here, I have my planes that I had, 2x minus y plus z is 5, which if you look here, this was what we started with, 2x minus y plus z is 5. This system is represented here. And if I look carefully at this system, I can see that they intersect in a line. That intersection line is right there. Okay, so they intersect in a line. So when I get this scenario here, as we saw in the last video, when I have a row of zeros and these are non-zeros, I get a line. So to find the equation line, I'm going to just let z equal to a parameter t. So then substituting back in, it says minus 3y plus 3t is equal to 1. Minus 3y is equal to 1 minus 3t. And so y is equal to negative one-third plus t. Here's my z. Here's my y. And I have to solve for my x, which I go into this equation here. I have 2x minus my y value plus my z value of t is equal to and then I come along and I simplify. I get plus one third minus t plus t is equal to 5. 2x. Just make sure I didn't make any computation errors there. My y's do, my t's do cancel out, so I get plus one third is equal to 5. 2x is equal to. 5 minus a third is 14 thirds, and x is 7 over 3. And so, what the final equation is going to be is x, y, z is equal to, well, 7 thirds plus t, and this is 0. <clears throat> My y was negative 1 third 1, negative 1 third 1. And my z was 0, 0, 1. Now, in analyzing our point, we have to remember that this could be any point at all on the line. The direction vector can be any scalar multiple. And if we look at our line here, we can see that we have 2 thirds. Oh, let's see what, the, what we were told the situation was. 
Okay, we get 2.33, which is 14 thirds, negative 1 third. And here we get 0, and these two values are both the same, so it does compare to this here. So this is 2 and a third, this is negative a third, which is the same as what we got here. Our line is correct. Let's do one more example. Let's see what we get when we do this scenario. Crunching through the numbers, you should pause and try it yourself. See how you've done. I'm going to go through the calculations right now. I get 1, 2, minus 1, 4, 3, 2, 1, and 7, 5, 2, 3, and 11. So I'm going to start with the first line. So I get 1, 2, negative 1, 4. Hmm, let's try that again. I'm going to multiply this by negative 3. So negative 3, negative 6, 3, negative 12. The reason why I multiply the first line by negative 3 is so that I can add it with the second line and get 0, negative 4, 4, and negative 5. So 0, negative 4, 4, and negative 5. For the next one, I'm going to multiply the top row by negative 5. 10, negative uh, 5, and negative 20. 5, 2, 3, and 11. Add them up, I get 0, minus 8, 8, and negative 9. So 0, negative 8, 8, and negative 9. Okay, and then I have to keep on simplifying. The top row I leave as is, 2, negative 1, 4. The next row I'll leave as it is. But I'm going to multiply, to find the third row, I'm going to multiply this row by 2. So 0, negative 8, 8, negative 2, or negative 10. 0, negative 8, 8, and negative 9. Oh, let me add, do it by negative. Let me change these signs. Multiply by negative 2. So that becomes positive, negative, positive, 0, 0, 1. So 0, 0, 0, 1. Right here, I can see quite clearly that this will give me no solution. And so what I can say is that there is no solution, therefore no intersection. There is no point, and there is no line. If we look at our graph, look at this picture here, I can clearly see from here that there is a tunnel. They are never going to intersect in this scenario here at all. Maybe if I put on blue, we can see the tunnel better. There's the tunnel right down here. They're never going to intersect. But what we do have is three parallel lines. All right, so in doing this, there's lots of different combinations that can happen. If you remember, it could look like any of these scenarios here. Any of these scenarios here emphasizing what the last rows of zeros and x's are going to be and to determine if there is a solution, like there is a line here or a point here, or these three, there are no solutions. Good luck.